All right, guys, I wanted to talk about black diesel or alternative fuels, more black diesel than anything, um, in an injection system that is an indirect injection system. And basically, what an indirect injection system, in a nutshell, I'm not going to go right into it. I will show in a minute, I'll show what it looks like, um, is basically the injector is not injecting it directly onto the piston. That's the easiest way to explain it and directly into the combustion chamber. It does technically on a dead in indirect, but doesn't shoot it on the piston. Anyways, what I wanted to talk about was this in black diesel application, because I was, I did a consultation call with a guy today, one hour consultation call. He's been having problems after he ran, I don't remember how many gallons it was, 175 gallons of engine oil. So that would be quite a few when you mix it down, It'd be quite a few gallons of fuel. He's been having a problem when he can't get the car to stop smoking. It smokes all the time, he said. Now he has a two tank set up. He has a tank in the back of the car that he's built to put in the back of the car. So he does have two tanks. And um, I talked to him, got him all figured out. So basically I wanted to help everybody out, put out a video talking about this. If you have a direct or indirect injection diesel engine that you're going to run black diesel in to try to help you out so basically uh, let me show let me show you what it looks like so that you guys understand for you guys that don't know i realize some of you guys already do but maybe you'll learn something by watching the video anyway on a direct injection engine like i said it shoots the fuel right into the piston and there'll be a bowl in the piston this is for a six seven cummins but gives you an idea now, indirect injection, the piston is going to more look like this. They're not all exactly like that, but most of the time they're going to more look like this. And basically what happens is instead of the fire happening on the top of the piston or all on the top of the piston, because it still happens on the piston, what happens is it gets put in to the pre-cup, which is a pre-injection event, basically. And if you look in there, you can see where the light's coming through. That's where the injector shoots the fuel in. And then there's another hole there for the glow plug, which really has nothing to do with what we're talking about, other than it does make it start different as it gets loaded up with stuff. But this cup actually sits inside here, if I could turn the right way. This cup sits inside there. And basically what happens is this cavity will actually get filled up with deposit. And as you fill this up with deposit, it can't fire properly because basically what it wants to do in, in, a, in in theory, is that when it shoots fuel, the fuel starts to ignite in here, the rest of it comes out and goes on top of the piston, or the piston, and your combustion cycle happens. As this gets loaded up with stuff, it can't atomize it properly or it can't combust it properly. Does it work? Oh yeah, it still runs. It just doesn't run clean anymore. So you'll get um, a nasty smoke all the time out of it. And basically what it is, is this area gets loaded up with garbage not like loaded loaded but it gets a bunch of it in there and you can have the same thing on a direct injection like a 12 valve cummins or whatever um you can have the same problem it's just that the way that the fire happens it's more it's a more direct fire and it tends to burn more stuff off where inside here it only gets so much fire and air movement right because no air actually it's just fuel that goes in here obviously air goes kind of in and out of it but not that much so the air comes in here you know goes around swirls around in here the exhaust valve opens go back out right suck squeeze bang blow so basically what happens is this gets loaded up now when this gets loaded up running water meth does not help you at all because the problem with the water meth is is the water meth there again comes in here swirls around goes back out here and never goes inside there so to combat that, that's the reason with indirect injection, I recommend not running oil as heavy myself. Um, and they tend to uh, work a lot longer without having problems. But a way to combat it, if you are going to run a heavier mix, what I, what I have done in the past running these with Volkswagens. What I recommend is you're going to do three, four tanks. There again, you have to play around this. It's not an exact science. It, on, it, it isn't. It's not a one size fits all, my opinion on that. But you're gonna be, let's say three to four tanks of, of black diesel. And then you're gonna to wanna to do one tank of diesel fuel, whatever diesel fuel you can get. Jet fuel actually works pretty good or kerosene because it's very dry. 
but you still have to run a fuel conditioner. And then I also recommend running some sort of a cleaning uh, conditioner. Um, at this point, I'm not recommending anybody's because I honestly don't know what works better than others. I know the stuff that I use, it seems to work. I know other guys have tried it, they said it doesn't work for them. So I'm just not gonna get into that. That's something I might get into down the road, we'll do some testing on it. The big thing is, is that I just, as it stands right now, in a couple of years, it'll be a different story. But right now, I just don't have time to dedicate hours and hours and hours to doing testing like that. I would love to, just not there yet. As the channel grows and it gets to a certain point, yes, I will be able to do that stuff. I want to do that stuff, but I've come to the realization that I just can't do that. So, here and over there. But if you run, let's say, three tanks of black diesel, one tank of diesel fuel, you will clean that combustion area out, the pre-cup area out, at least to a certain point, and then that's the reason to put the cleaner in there. I know quite a few people, love it or hate it, will do it with seafoam. So they run seafoam in their diesel fuel, and I know quite a few guys in, in uh, Eastern Canada, where that's where seafoam originally came from, I believe, anyways, it doesn't matter, that it does a pretty good job of cleaning. Myself, personally, I've used it before, never for that instance, or for that uh, application. So, but if you do do that, you will have way less problems. I have come to find out the injectors don't get all coked up really bad to a point where you have to pull them out and clean them, and then that pre-cup area is still loaded with stuff, and the only way to clean that is by pulling the head off, pulling the pre-cups out, and actually cleaning it. So when it gets a certain amount of, of, of um, junk in there or deposit in there it's really hard to get it out without physically cleaning it by hand which means taking the head off so you can do it 100% you just want to make sure that you're using at least you know you know three tanks of black diesel to a tank of diesel fuel and now on the tank of diesel fuel what I recommend is you're gonna to want to do I'm not gonna give you a percentage because every time I give you guys a percentage you about it I'm gonna say if you take 10 gallons of diesel fuel take one gallon of gasoline mix it in there whatever ratio you want to figure that out 10 parts to one part I guess um, and run that as your tank full of, of diesel fuel and anytime if you're running a two tank system um, I what I do is I run um, that 10 parts to one part uh, diesel fuel to gasoline mix, 10, part being, or 10 parts being uh, diesel fuel, and then I run the cleaner that I run. And I've been doing that, and it seems to work relatively well um, with two tanks. So what I do is I'll run, um, you know, lots of times I'll run part of my day, like if I'm running back and forth, I don't live that far from home, so the truck doesn't run that much. I try to run it more on diesel fuel than black diesel. I just use the black diesel if I'm going for a longer drive, that type of thing, just because I don't want it to get loaded up. But you can do it if you have two tanks or if you're just running one tank. Um, you just you want to watch that as it starts to, especially with the indirection, indirect injection, as it starts to run funny, you want to get that system cleaned back up again so you don't have problems. So, if you're running two tanks, like I said, I personally just run, you know, I'll run, let's say, a tank to a third of a tank of diesel fuel. And I never, I, I did that with my Volkswagen for a long time and I never had any problems. I did run water meth on the Volkswagen, um, but that for more than anything, I did that because I wanted the thing to have a little bit more power because it was a dog. So, but when I tore it apart, the last one that I had, when I tore it apart, it was pretty clean inside. There was almost no deposit in the pre-cup um, and there was almost no deposit anywhere else. Like the, nothing was loaded up with garbage. The exhaust valves weren't loaded up with garbage. The intake was clean. Obviously the intake should be clean because nothing goes through it anyway. Um, but everything was pretty clean. So I had really good luck with that, but that's running two tanks. And I realize a lot of you guys with the indirect injection stuff, it's older stuff, you're probably not running two tanks. And this goes the same, so Volkswagens, Mercedes, uh, the old IDI Fords, um, I'm sure there's a hundred different ones. Any of the Toyota diesel, diesels that are indirect injection, um, you know, if you're running on generators or any of that stuff is indirect injection. 
Um, it seems to work really well doing it that way. So if you're running one tank, like I said, three tanks to one tank, or you could even do like, I don't know. I personally like the three tanks to one tank because then you get a long time, a longer time to get it actually cleaned out. Um, it just depends on what kind of money, you know, you want to spend on fuel, obviously. Um, and then if you're running two tanks there again, you know, you can run three tanks to one tank. And if you're switching it back and forth, obviously you're going to burn a little bit more diesel fuel, depending on, you know, if you're doing it because you want to drive the city, because it does smell funny. And then when it gets to a certain point where it starts to smoke more, you can just swip it, you know, swap it over. Uh, but I have found that makes a huge difference. So hopefully that helps some guys out. Like I said, I just had a consultation call with a guy today that I wanted to talk about. So here we are. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, remember, it's not rocket science.